I feel like I'm gonna get famous real f***ing so like real big and um I'm really hyped and really stoked and just really pumped up um I'm gonna get his music sh all I got and uh see where it gets me so <laughs> see what happens Juice World is a late artist whose emotionally vulnerable style took him from SoundCloud to stardom at record speeds. Not only was his rise to stardom rapid, but so is his career as a whole. Juice's struggles with addiction and mental health ultimately claimed his life at the young age of 21, ending his career just a few years after it began. He recorded thousands of songs in the short period of time he made music, allowing his label to posthumously release unheard music in his memory. It can be hard for some to listen to the music released after his passing because of how often it openly discusses the struggles he was dealing with that ultimately led to his demise. But the messages in his music also resonate with others that share the same struggles. If you listen to hip hop and rap, you've most likely heard of Juice World to some extent, but how far does your knowledge of Juice World go? Does it lie just at the tip of the iceberg, or does it extend far beneath the sea? In this video, I explain the full Juice World covering everything there is to know about the late emo and SoundCloud rap icon who influenced so many in such a short period of time. Now, let's take a dive in and find out how deep your knowledge of Juice World really goes. Lucid Dreams is Juice World's most popular song, reaching number two on the Billboard Hot 100 and being certified diamond. It is the number one most streamed solo hip hop song on Spotify and number two most streamed hip hop song of all time on Spotify. Juice stated that the song only took him 15 minutes to write and 20 minutes to record. It first released on June 15th, 2017 on SoundCloud alongside his Juice World 999 EP. By March of 2018, all the songs in the EP averaged around 500,000 plays, with none breaking a million, except Lucid Dreams, which sat at over 2.5 million plays. The song's success on SoundCloud led to an official release as a single on May 4th, 2018, and a music video was released by Cole Bennett just six days later. The song would quickly explode in popularity, charting for the first time 22 days after its official release, and reaching its peak of number two just over four months later. Juice World stated the song was made to be a therapy session during a period of relationship problems he was encountering. The song brought a lot of attention to the emo rap genre through its mainstream success and helped turn Juice World into a household name. A remix for the song featuring Lil Uzi Vert leaked on May 23rd, 2021, and officially released five days later. I'm so in love with that girl. All Girls Are The Same is Juice World's debut single about women in his past relationships that have broken his heart. The song released on December 22nd, 2017 as a lead single from his debut studio album Goodbye and Good Riddance. Although this was his first song that would eventually blow up, it wasn't an immediate success. Upon its release on SoundCloud, it got 11,000 plays in two days. The music video for the song was uploaded by Cole Bennett on February 25th, 2018 and was arguably what catapulted Juice into the mainstream. The music video garnered over half a million views in less than two days, and shortly following the video's release, Interscope Records signed Juice to a $3 million deal. Around a month later, Lil Yachty previewed a remix to the song on his Instagram. Yachty attempted to upload the remix to his SoundCloud three months later, but the track was quickly deleted due to copyright issues. There is an over two hour long video of the studio session of the song being recorded and mixed that can be found online. The song is now six times platinum and is Juice's second most successful song. Robbery is the lead single to Juice World's sophomore album, Death Race for Love. The track was originally leaked in early 2018 in a mass leak of Juice's music. The song's final mix was released on February 13th, 2019, and its music video was released by Cole Bennett the following day for Valentine's Day. Robbery is an emotional separation-themed song about a woman stealing Juice's heart. The song debuted and peaked at number 27 on the Hot 100, and is Juice World's third most accomplished song, being certified five times platinum. On December 8th, 2019, six days after his 21st birthday, Juice World was aboard a private Gulfstream jet flying from Van Nuys Airport in Los Angeles to Midway International Airport in Chicago. Among Juice were his girlfriend, his cousin, the kid Leroy, Chris Long, and a few others. As the plane approached the Atlantic aviation hangar, they were greeted by federal agents who had been tipped that the group was carrying contraband. While police and federal agents were searching Juice and his entourage's luggage for guns and drugs, Juice let out a gasp and collapsed to the ground. Juice began convulsing and 
sneezing, which caused him to bleed from his nose and mouth, and went into cardiac arrest. Two doses of the emergency medication Narcan were administered as an opioid overdose was suspected. Ju stopped breathing and became pulseless after he was brought to the ambulance. The paramedics started CPR and provided Narcan again with no change. He was taken to Holy Cross Hospital where more Narcan was administered again with no change in his condition. He was transferred to Advocate Christ Medical Center in Oak Lawn where he was pronounced dead at 3.14 a.m. Emergency room doctors found nine pills in his pockets, and there were also pills scattered around him where he initially collapsed. It was first rumored that Juice had swallowed multiple Percocet pills to hide them while police were on board the plane searching the luggage, but the toxicology test that followed found that Juice's death was accidental, caused by an overdose of oxycodone and codeine. Other drugs that were found in his system included THC, morphine, and caffeine. The police who searched the jet that Juice was on ended up finding 41 vacuum sealed bags of marijuana weighing 70 pounds, 6 bottles of prescription codeine cough syrup, 2 9mm pistols, a 40 caliber pistol, a high capacity ammunition magazine, and metal piercing bullets. Two of Juice World security guards were charged for legally possessing guns and ammunition. After Juice's passing was announced, clips released that showed him on his final plane ride in high spirits looking happy. Legends Never Dies, Juice World's first posthumous album. Multiple demos of the album surfaced on the internet in early 2020 and consisted of up to 30 of his tracks, none of which being officially confirmed to be on the album. When the album did release on July 10th, 2020, it was an instant hit, going number one in 10 different countries and selling 497,000 album equivalent units in its first week. For the week ending July 25th, 2020, a total of 17 of the album's songs charted on the US Billboard Hot 100 with five entries in the top 10, Come and Go, Wishing Well, Conversations, Life's a Mess, and Hate the Other Side. That achievement made Juice World only the third artist in history to have at least five songs in the top 10 simultaneously, along with the Beatles and Drake. The album also became the most successful posthumous release in 20 years. It recently became the hip-hop album with the most songs that have over 100 million streams on Spotify. Legends Never Die ended up being nominated by Billboard for Top Rap Album and Top Billboard 200 Album, and it was also nominated by the American Music Awards for Favorite Rap Slash Hip Hop Album, but it didn't end up winning any of the nominations. Goodbye and Good Riddance is Juice World's debut studio album, released on May 23rd, 2018. The album had a gradual increase in popularity, debuting at number 15 on the Billboard 200, selling 39,000 copies in its first week, then moving up to number 8 in its second week, number 6 in its third week, and reaching a peak of number 4 on August 11, 2018. Juice's two most popular songs, Lucid Dreams and All Girls Are The Same, are included in this album. The album originally contained no features until a single feature was added over a month after its release from Lil Uzi Vert. Goodbye and Good Riddance is currently Juice World's best performing album, being certified three times platinum. Death Race for Love is the final album Juice World released before his passing. It was released on March 8, 2019 and debuted at number one on the US Billboard 200 chart, earning 165,000 album equivalent units in his first week. This became Juice World's first number one album. Juice explained that initially he felt pressure to exceed his first album's success both commercially and in quality, which disrupted his songwriting. He said that when he managed to move past his fears, he recorded the album in four days. He stated, every song but two or three of them on the new album are all freestyles, all made up in those four days. The album's cover and title are inspired by the Twisted Metal series of video games for the original PlayStation console. The album was nominated by the Billboard Music Awards for Top Rap Album, but didn't win. It was also nominated by the iHeartRadio Music Awards for Hip Hop Album of the Year, which it ended up winning. Juice World was famously known for his freestyling ability. He freestyled most of his songs rather than writing the lyrics down beforehand. In November of 2019, Juice was quoted saying, I have not written a song in a very long time. I just go off the top of my head pretty much. Like I stated previously, Juice claims to have freestyled his final Death Race for Love album. Juice has many infamous freestyles, such as his hour-long freestyle over Eminem beats on Tim Westwood TV. I don't even know what writing is. I ain't writing a long time. I didn't check my rollie at the fucking wrong time. Niggas say they could ball like this. Them niggas offsides. All my niggas wavy as fuck. Nigga, we get high tide. This was actually his second hour-long freestyle on the Tim Westwood TV channel. Juice World's most viewed freestyle on YouTube with over 30 million views is his freestyle over the song Rain by Daju. Uh, uh, listen to the way that I flow on this shit, it's off the top like a wave cap.
There's a freestyle Juice did on the No Jumper channel where he was repeatedly shown random items and managed to continue his freestyle while incorporating the item into the freestyle. Take a hug at the sneezing on me. I pull up in that fan and that Sprite, so I tell that Pepsi to leave me alone. All I know is get the money on. Look at my jacket, it's real long. Look at your bitch listening to Lucid Dreams, I know that that shit is her theme song. I control that bitch like a remote. Run up on me, then I'm down to blow. All of my niggas, they grip and pose. Blue Minotti with it, cause I take a soul. Yeah, I go harder. Get a wetter than bottles of water. He also did the same thing on the Zia's channel. I switch like Nintendo. Pull up on him, rhymes off of the mental. Explode like pop when you drop one mental. Hey, bitch, I'm dope, no antidote. Pull up on the scene with a chop with a photo. Pull up with a photo. Hanging out the photo. Dragging like a modo. Pose on a photo. Out of my wrist. Out of my wrist with the AP. This so cold. Run the back, go and play me. Pull up on the scene, 444 Jay Z. Hit a nigga with a combo, like, pay me, fuck you. Pull up on the scene, like, I'm a buck you. Nugget, you buck, run up on me, I buck too. Chop on me, and it cups like a buck or two. Where you see? Many people consider Juice to be one of the greatest freestylers of all time, and Juice even called himself the Freestyle King on his song, Feeling. Godzilla was the first song featuring Juice World to be released after his passing. The song is about Eminem and features Juice World on the chorus. The song came out less than two months after Juice's passing on January 28, 2020. Juice previously listed Eminem as one of his biggest influences, and this track marks their first collaboration. The song debuted at number three in the US and number one in four other countries. The official music video for the song dropped on March 9, 2020, directed by Cole Bennett. The video featured appearances from Eminem, Dr. Dre, Mike Tyson, and Juice World in a dedication at the end. In March 2022, it was confirmed by Chris Long that Juice World had recorded two extra verses on the beat that didn't appear on the final song. Godzilla is now certified three times platinum and is Juice's highest charting song as a feature. Bandit is the final song released by Juice World before his passing. The song released October 4th, 2019 and featured Youngboy Never Broke Again. The song was released alongside a music video directed by Cole Bennett, which showed Juice on a bayou boat ride where he holds baby alligators and Youngboy doing wheelies on a quad bike. In the song, Juice World talks about stealing a girl's heart, calling himself the definition of a bandit. The song originally leaked online in June of 2018 with unfinished mastering and a missing verse. In September 2019, rumors of a feature from Youngboy began circulating as a snippet containing some of his vocals appeared online. Teasers of the music video also featured the two artists on boats in the Louisiana lake, seemingly confirming that an accompanying music video was on its way. Two days before its release, Juice officially announced the song on social media. Bandit peaked on the charts in its second week, reaching number 10, making it Juice's second top 10 song and Youngboy's first. The song is now three times platinum. Come and Go is Juice World's most popular song to release after his passing. The beat was produced by Marshmello and features lyrics of Juice focusing on the positive side of his love and relationship. The song debuted at number two on the Billboard Hot 100, making it tied for Juice World's highest charting song, as well as tied for Marshmello's highest charting song. Come and Go was first previewed on Juice's Twitter on November 30th, 2018. I don't wanna ruin this this type of love don't always come and go The video was captioned Off My Chest, leading people to speculate that that was the title of the song. An early version of the song leaked on August 18th, 2019, and the final song was eventually released on July 9th, 2020, one day before Juice's album Legends Never Die. The song is now three times platinum. Do you know what else likes to come and go? Your data. That's where today's sponsor Atlas VPN could really help you out. Atlas VPN is a tool that encrypts your data and hides your location, ensuring you privacy when you're online. It also gives you the ability to change your online location. Why is this useful, you may ask? Well, let's say for instance, you want to catch up on all the Juice World songs I've discussed in this video. You search YouTube and find the song, but then you are met with two 15 second ads. Instead of wasting a potential 30 seconds of your time for every song you listen to, you decide to buy YouTube Premium. Using Atlas VPN, you can change your device's location, which can drop the price of what you're trying to buy by a massive amount. YouTube Premium was just one example, but it works for other subscription services as well, like Spotify and Netflix. You can even use it to save money on hotel bookings, plane tickets, car rentals, and games you purchase. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount where you can get a full three-year subscription for only $1.99 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. This deal won't last forever, so make sure to lock this deal in now by clicking the top link in this video's description before it's too late. Other features you can enjoy when purchasing the subscription include increasing online performance, unblocking websites and apps that are regionally blocked, and stopping ads and malware. Atlas VPN uses streaming optimized service to tackle buffering, lag, and other issues which can help you watch your favorite media uninterrupted. If there's something you want to watch but can't because of a region block, Atlas VPN can help by changing your location to make it seem as if you're somewhere completely different. Atlas VPN protects any and all devices which you connected to. Once again, Atlas VPN
Weekend is running a massive discount where you can get a three year subscription for just $1.99 a month with a 30 day money back guarantee. This is the most affordable online protection you can get. So make sure to act fast by clicking the top link in the description. Now let's get back to the video. A majority of Juice World's most popular music videos are on the Lyrical Lemonade YouTube channel made by Cole Bennett. Juice and Cole's first collaboration came on the song All Girls Are The Same, and this music video played a big role in Juice World rising to stardom as it introduced many people to his music. Their next collaboration came on the song Lucid Dreams, and that is now the most viewed video on the Lyrical Lemonade YouTube channel with 799 million views. Juice and Cole have a total of 10 music videos together, with four of them being top five most viewed on the Lyrical Lemonade channel. Juice and Cole both played important roles in each other success, both mutually benefiting from their collaboration. After Juice passed, Cole got a tattoo in his memory. The Kid Leroy is an artist who many consider to be Juice World's protege. Leroy was a big fan of Juice before they met, claiming that he was his favorite artist. By age 15, Leroy had already gained a local following in Australia, but after he met Juice, his popularity would reach a mainstream level. Juice would mentor Leroy and have him as the opener to his first Australian tour in 2019. Leroy also signed with Grade A Productions, the same label as Juice. After the Death Race for Love tour that Leroy performed in with Juice, Leroy would move to LA, living with Juice for around three months. Here, Leroy would learn from his idol on how the studio and recording process worked. When talking about his time with Juice, Leroy was quoted saying, that was my big brother. I learned a whole lot from him. I'm super duper inspired by him, if you couldn't tell. For Leroy's 16th birthday, Juice gave him a free verse, which he said would normally cost 200,000. Hey, if your birthday, I'll give you a verse, folks. The song was called Go and was their first release collaboration together, but it didn't come out until after Juice's passing. The song was a success, becoming Leroy's first song to chart in the US, reaching number 52 on the Billboard Hot 100. Three other songs would release featuring both Juice World and the kid Leroy, all after Juice's passing. Leroy was one of the people with Juice on the night of his passing, and he described what that night was like. It was, I didn't really know. Like, what the fuck I could do to help? So we're all just sitting there panicking. Everybody's like, what the fuck? Juice World was a huge inspiration to Leroy and helped him become a mainstream artist at a very young age, much like Juice himself. Make some fucking noise for my boy Juice World one time. Ali Lottie was Juice World's girlfriend from 2018 up until his passing. They met a year before his death after Ali sent Juice an Instagram DM saying, good music and keep it up, kid. A few months later, while on tour, Juice drove to Providence, Rhode Island to meet Lottie for the first time. Their first meeting went well, and Juice stated, I was going to leave the hotel room, write her a note. Did you like me? Yes or no? Circle. And just slide that under the door. If you like me, still be here when I get back upstairs. And if you don't, I'm sorry. You're pretty. Bye. She didn't leave, and they spent the next four days together. Lottie was living in Memphis at the time, where she owned a house. Shortly after those four days, she moved out to LA with Juice. The pair made the relationship public in November 2018. Juice World name-dropped Ali in multiple songs, such as Attachments and lurking. Lottie, Lottie, you know, if you leave me, you asking for the gun smoke. This is real, no cap. Juice even ended up getting two tattoos of her. One was on his left bicep and read Ali's World. The other was on his left forearm and read I love ALL, ALL being Ali's initials. Juice responded to one of Ali's tweets in July of 2019, alluding to him quitting coding for good by her request. Over the course of their relationship, they would end up losing three children due to miscarriages. Ali lost the third child after the shock of her boyfriend's death. When talking about having a child, she tweeted, it's all he wanted. We worked a lot and it took a toll on my body. I was always sick. Ali was with Juice World when he passed away, and she recalled watching him convulse as they and others were being held by police. She said that he died in her arms. My fiance passed away in my arms. I can go do whatever the fuck I want, but I got clean and I got myself together. Going through one of the hardest things I've ever had to go through. In early 2018, Juice World became friends with fellow artist Ski Mask the Slump God. They became really close and went on to collaborate on the song Nuketown in November of 2018. Nuketown ended up becoming Ski Mask's highest charting song on the Billboard Hot 100. In an interview with XXL in December 2018, Ski Mask confirmed that he would be releasing a joint mixtape with Juice World titled Evil Twins in 2019. You and Juice, you know, talked about dropping a mixtape or album together. Um, what's the status on that? Uh, Evil Twins. Um... Evil Twins will come 2019. This project, however, would never be released. In 2019, following the release of Juice World's second album, the two embarked on the Death Race for Love tour together, along with Cole Bennett. After Juice passed away on December 8th, 2019, Ski expressed his emotions on Twitter. Ski had now lost his two best friends in a span of 18 months, 
first with XXX Tentacion, then Juice World. Ski Mask was present at Juice World's funeral. Juice World is known for being one of the biggest and most influential artists ever to originate from the SoundCloud platform. He began posting songs to SoundCloud in his sophomore year of high school. His first song was released on SoundCloud in early 2015. After a year of dropping Lucy's and freestyles on SoundCloud, Juice put together his first project in early 2016. The project featured catchy autotune anthems, including a song where he shouts out hometown hero Kanye West with a freestyle over his song Runaway. About a year and a half later, Juice would release an EP that started to show the full-fledged version of a signature emo sound that he became well known for. This EP contained his eventual biggest hit, Lucid Dreams. To give an idea of how popular Juice was during this time, four months after this EP was released, Juice was thanking his fans for 10,000 plays and about three months on his newest single, Autograph. Two months later, Juice would drop All Girls Are The Same, which garnered him 11,000 plays in two days, which was great for Juice at the time. As I mentioned earlier, this was the song that helped launch Juice into the mainstream. Juice of course still uploaded music to SoundCloud after the song blew up, but now he was quickly being seen as more of a mainstream artist than just a SoundCloud rapper. He would now upload his music to all streaming platforms instead of exclusively to SoundCloud. Legends is a song Juice World made as a tribute to late artists Lil Peep and XXXTentacion. The song was made in response to the passing of X on June 18th, 2018. Juice previewed this song on his Instagram Live on June 19th, the same day he dropped it. This means Juice created the entire song in just under a day. In the song, Juice talks about how unexpected X's death was and resurfaced the event of Lil Peep's drug-related death on November 15th, 2017. This time it was so The cover art for the song is a conversation that took place between Juice and X on March 11th. More of the same conversation would leak later, showing a message that came just before the ones on the Legends cover. Juice would pay tribute to Fallen Legends when performing the song live. Before we continue this song, I want to stop and say R.I.P. to Jose, R.I.P. to Mac Miller, R.I.P. to Lil R.I.P. to Fredo Santana, R.I.P. to ASAP Mims, R.I.P. to Speaker Knockers, nigga. R.I.P. to all the fucking legends that we lost. Now I want everybody to sing the chorus one more time with me. All right, let's do it. I usually have the answer to the question, but this time I'm gonna be quiet. This time. LLJW is an abbreviation that stands for Long Live Juice World. Fans frequently use this term to pay their respects to Juice after his passing. Righteous is the first song released by Juice World after his passing. The song first leaked online in late 2019, but was later officially released on April 24th, 2020. The song addresses anxiety and trying to overcome it by self-medicating while also acknowledging the risk of doing so. We may die this evening, coughing, wheezing, bleeding. The song was recorded at Juice World's home studio in Los Angeles, and his girlfriend Ali posted about her memories of that night listening to the song with him, and how now it's very emotional for her to listen to. Juice World was a heavy drug user during his childhood and teens, all the way through his adult life. He began drinking lean in sixth grade and using Percocets and Xanax in 2013. I've been doing drugs since one three. He also smoked cigarettes briefly before quitting in his last year of high school because of health issues. Juice frequently and openly talked about his drug use in interviews and in his music. In an interview with The Breakfast Club, he mentioned how his ADD diagnosis in middle school led to his initial drug use. Uh, just not, not paying attention. Right. They yeah. said you had ADD when you were younger. Yeah. Supposedly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They put you on anything for it? For sure. Or at, uh, Adderall? You know, they love putting little kids on that Especially shit. Especially little man. black kids from the hood. Of course. Yeah. They love doing that. You know they put me on that shit. Adderall. They do Adderall. Look. <laughs> That's that crazy. That started out with Folkland. I didn't, what well, I've been on all that Folkland, what's the Ritalin, mm -hmm. uh, Vivans, Adderall, all None that shit. Work. So I eat my breakfast in there, and then she'll have my pills wrapped up, and then I, I'm supposed to take them after I eat. I should just throw them away. Mm. And, that's that's crazy. That tell you something, cause that when was that like fifth, sixth grade? Mm -hmm. I did not like the way that shit made me feel. Like you knew it was some bullshit. Yeah, cause look, like I said, that shit damn near ruined my childhood a mm -hmm. little bit. Like ain't ruined it, but it made it less enjoyable, cause. That shit kill your personality. Mm -hmm. It is actually very common for children who have been given these ADD treatment drugs to struggle with addiction later in life. Juice also blamed the ADD treatment Vivans for his drug addiction on his song, Remind Me of the Summer. I can probably start it with the Vivans. Now I'm staring at oxycodone in my hand. One song that fully captures the extent of his drug use is Lean With Me, which is specifically about his struggle with his use of drugs and the consequences they're having on his life. Smoke with me, drink with me. 
fucked up liver with some bad kidney. The music video for the song begins with Juice in a 12-step recovery meeting, which are meant to help with recovery from substance addictions, behavioral addictions, and compulsions. The video closes with the phone number of the National Drug and Alcohol Treatment Hotline. Along with his many drug-themed songs and lyrics, he has an entire mixtape with Future that is drug-themed, with its title being its cover depicting a various assortment of drugs covering the earth. One of Juice World's ex-girlfriends revealed that he took up to three Percocet pills a day and mixed drugs with lean. She also described their relationship falling apart after he turned violent while going through withdrawal. Juice World constantly talked about detoxing, getting healthy, and wanting to stop, but unfortunately his time was cut short. Fighting Demons is Juice World's most recent studio album, released December 10th, 2021. The album serves as a soundtrack to Juice World's Into the Abyss documentary. The album mainly focuses on the topic of mental health along with drug addiction. A lot of the songs on the album had been leaked previously at some point, such as Rockstar in his prime and Doom. The album ended up selling 119,000 units in its first week, debuting at number 2 on the Billboard 200. Juice World was subject to many leaked songs while he was alive and even more after he passed. Juice called out his leakers many times as well, hoping to sway them away from leaking his music. Oh my god. Who's stealing your stuff? I don't know, somebody. <laughs> Damn. Mm, and it's funny because all the people that threaten the hack and leak, and them the ones that claim they're the biggest fans. I'm like, how is you a fan? Dang. I don't make you a fan. Like, what? After Juice passed, the leaks would escalate with coordinated group buys where a group of Juice World fans would all pitch in to purchase a leaked song from a leaker. Some of these leaks were going for a hefty amount of money, such as GoPro, which was priced at $25,000. Juice World fans reportedly spent over $590,000 on group buys for leaked songs. Juice World's mom spoke out and said she believes the people who leak his songs are disrespecting his legacy. Lil Bibby stated that he thinks Juice has at least six to 700 songs currently leaked on the internet. Well, Juice Lucky. got at least it's like six, seven hundred songs that's leaked. Some of his most popular leaks include Rental, Adore You, No Coaster, Remind Me of Summer, Run, Life's a Dungeon, Mansion, Starstruck, Confide, The Light, Pills in the Regal, GoPro, Keep It, and Arctic Tundra. Oh, can you, for those that don't know, can you tell everybody how you got discovered? How did you get your start? Um, really just, you know, people from Chicago showed me love. Uh, Bibby and his brother reached out to me, uh, helped me get on the platform. It was history from now. And Lil Bibby is a rapper who switched his focus to managing his own record label, Grade A Production. He launched it with his brother G Money in 2017, and they discovered an upcoming Juice World that same year. All Girls Are the Same was Juice's biggest song at that time, with 70,000 streams on SoundCloud. Lucid Dreams barely had any clicks on YouTube at this time, but Bibby told his brother that it was the best song that he had heard in a long time. After hearing the song and signing Juice to his label, Bibby kept pushing Juice's music onto anyone and everyone who would listen, including Cole Bennett. Bibby stated, I had to keep gas and coal to do it, just link with the kid, referring to a music video request. It eventually happened and Juice blew up from there, releasing two albums, a collab tape, and various singles under Grade A Productions before his passing. There have been two albums released by Juice under Grade A Productions after his passing, along with a few singles as well. Juice and Bibby have three songs together, In This Bitch, Right Now, and Smart, all of which are unreleased. 999 is a number that Juice World and his team used in music, on social media, and on merchandise. Juice World had 999 tattooed across his left wrist and on top of his right hand. He explained the meaning behind the number in an interview. Oh, cool. Um, so I got it tatted on me. Yep. Right here. 999. Um, if you're a person that believes anything that's any, whether you any type of thing has to do with the Bible. Mm -hmm. Um, I think in the last book of the Bible would say that 666 is the mark of the beast, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's that's Satan. That's about from it. That's hell. 999 represents taking whatever hell, whatever bad situation, whatever struggle you're going through, and turning it into something positive and using it to push yourself forward. Oh, snap. Oh. The party never ends. And I'm out telling what my saying. The Party Never Ends is Juice World's upcoming third posthumous album. The title was hinted at numerous times by Lil Bibby, and the line has been used in Juice's own music, like in his leaked song titled The Party Never Ends, another unreleased song titled Don't Forget Me, and most notably on the last line of the outro to Legends Never Die. The Party Never Ends. On July 8th, 2021, Juice's estate released the album trailer on YouTube, also revealing the cover art through the pre-save link. In October 2021, Lil Bibby announced that The Party Never Ends was postponed and that another album would be releasing in 2021 in place of it, which ended up becoming the album Fighting Demons. 
On December 11th, 2021, Lil Bibi announced that The Party Never Ends will drop in June of 2022. It was also announced that The Party Never Ends will be the first of three albums in a trilogy series to culminate Juice's legacy. On March 16th, 2022, DJ Academics posted a Twitter DM exchange between Lil Bibi and another account regarding all the song leaks that have been getting out. According to Bibi, he may be canceling The Party Never Ends, saying, these leaks is getting out of hand. I hope all the fans are happy. The party never ends might be canceled if all the shit leaks. Later on April 29th, Bibi made a tweet saying, no party this year, fuck the hackers. It is now unknown when or if the album is going to drop. Outsiders was Juice World's planned third studio album before his death. On May 4th, 2020, Juice's girlfriend Ali Lotti referenced an album under the title of The Outsiders, which Juice World had intended to make his next album. After Juice passed, his label and grieving family chose to delay the Outsiders album and first release a 15-track tribute album, which was Legends Never Die. Outsiders was originally supposed to drop on his 21st birthday, but never did. On June 3rd, 2021, Ali tweeted describing what The Outsiders is, which is an album she and Juice talked about that Juice had a specific track list for, with songs needing to be in a specific, important order. It is unknown when or if The Outsiders album is going to be released. On October 16th, 2017, Juice World made a tweet that read, The day I make a collab tape with Future is the day I made it. Almost exactly a year later, on October 19th, 2018, Juice World released a collab tape with Future titled World on Drugs. The tape debuted at number two on the US Billboard 200, selling 98,000 album equivalent units. This served as Juice World's second top 10 album in the US and Future's 10th. After Juice passed away, Future made an Instagram story post in his honor. He also shared his thoughts on Juice's passing in an XXL cover story, saying, it was heartbreaking about Juice. Still to this day, I'm heartbroken. Rest in peace to Juice World. Juice World's most popular song, Lucid Dreams, contains an interpolation from the song, Shape of My Heart by Sting. The producer of Lucid Dreams, Nick Mira, called out Sting on Twitter on November 17th, 2018, saying, Fuck Sting and his whole team. After taking 85% of Lucid Dreams for interpolating Shape of My Heart, not even sampling, he threatened to take us to court for trying to get any percentage. The next day, Juice made a tweet about the situation, seeming a lot more calm than Nick, despite losing out on 85% of his biggest hit. When talking about the situation in an interview, Juice stated, That song is so much more expensive than money and what money can buy. It's so much more touching than what money could touch. That song really saved lives. And people are sitting here telling me blah 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 90% this 90% that they bogus fucks no bro without sting this wouldn't even be a song i don't really trip on money especially with a song like that with the reaction it's had from everybody sting also spoke out on the situation calling lucid dreams a beautiful interpretation that is faithful to the original song's form he said it was his favorite of all the many interpolations of shape of my heart sting also mourned the loss of juice world stating that juice's death was such a tragic loss for the world of music a young life with so much potential and a unique and precious talent. In October of 2019, members of the band Yellow Card sued Juice World for $15 million, claiming that Lucid Dreams copied the melody of their song, Hollywood Die. Accidents out on the highway to somewhere they Following Juice World's death on December 8th, 2019, the band extended a deadline for defendants to respond to the lawsuits into February 2020. Yellow Card's law firm issued a statement disputing the $15 million figure in the lawsuit as falsely reported, with the final figure yet to be determined. While expressing sympathy for Juice World's sudden death, the firm said the action would be pursued despite incredible mixed emotions from the band and firm. After Juice World's mother became the representative of his estate, Yellow Card quietly dropped a lawsuit on July 27, 2020, with the band's lawyer stating that the band was very sympathetic not only of Juice World's death, but also needed time to decide whether they really wanted to pursue the case against his grieving mother as the personal representative of his estate. They did, however, state that the case could be refiled if the band were to change their minds. On October 7th, 2020, DJ Scheme, who was a close friend and collaborator of Juice World and XXXTentacion, first teased a collaboration between the two in a tweet using X's signature Bad Vibes Forever and Juice's number 999. On November 15th, 2021, X's manager Solomon confirmed that collaboration would be coming in the near future. During a Discord Q&A in January 2022, X's close friend and producer John Cunningham confirmed that the song would feature an unheard verse from X and also expressed his hopes that it would release in 2022. Um, I was wondering if the, the X verse for the X and Juice song, is it leaked or is it like a unheard? Unheard, baby. Is it a 2022 release or not? Nah?
Uh, I hope so. On March 31st, 2022, X's label posted a picture of X and Juice's faces combined to X's Instagram, further hinting at the collaboration's upcoming release. Not long after this post, a snippet surfaced online that was supposedly of the leaked collaboration. Waterfalls on leak.cx. Waterfalls on leak.cx. Waterfalls on leak.cx. The full version of the song leaked online in its entirety on April 20th, 2022, but John Cunningham revealed that this was an old version of the song. The song featured a chorus that X first previewed on Instagram on January 28th, 2018, parodying the Ugandan Knuckles meme, which was popular at the time. Do you know the way? Do you know the way? Juice's vocals on the song are from another one of his unreleased songs called Inner Peace, which leaked online on November 5th, 2019. The original version of Inner Peace started being taken down on YouTube right around when the X collab was first getting teased meaning they were likely planning to release some version of the song at some point. It is unknown when the song featuring both Juice and X will see an official release. Juice was born on December 2nd, 1998 in Chicago, Illinois. He grew up in the South suburbs, spending his childhood in Calumet Park and later moving to Homewood. He was reportedly laid to rest at Homewood Memorial Garden. After his passing, he was memorialized in his hometown via a massive mural. There are also other murals of Juice in Chicago. Juice World Into the Abyss is a documentary film released in 2021 focusing on the life and death of Juice World. It premiered at the AFI Fest on November 12, 2021, where it won the AFI Fest Documentary Audience Award. It officially debuted on December 16, 2021, after an exclusive preview at Chicago's United Center held on December 9th. The album Fighting Demons served as a tie-in for this documentary. The documentary contains footage from Juice's last years and contains appearances from numerous friends and family of his, including The Kid Leroy, Ali Lottie, and Lil Bibby. It also features a variety of collaborators of Juice, including Ski Master Slump God, Polo G, G Herbo, Cole Bennett, Benny Blanco, Rex Kudo, and Hit Boy. The film received mostly positive reviews, but some negative reviews didn't like how the film showed intimate footage of Juice's spiral into addiction. For example, there's a point in the film where Juice shows the camera five pills that are presumably Percocets sitting on his tongue. He washes them down with water and shudders. He then says, when we both die, we're gonna have somebody put that out. The doc also stated that Juice's team figured out he was taking an estimated 20 pills a day at one point, as well as sipping lean even after publicly pledging to quit. The title of the doc contains the word abyss, which was important enough to Juice that he had it tatted on his left forearm. He explained the word's meaning to him in a Montrealty interview. The abyss is something I feel like everybody is trapped in. Here's a perfect example of the abyss shit. Somebody that goes get, goes to like a, a D1 college, they spend all this money, right? To, to get a degree, they don't even do the shit that they got the degree for, and then they work in an office job every day until they die. He is in the abyss, or she is in the abyss. He also used the word abyss in his lyrics occasionally. For lost in the abyss, over a bitch that never loved me for shit. In her abyss, ain't no coming back. There are so many coincidences with Juice's passing that it seems like he predicted his own demise. Juice predicting his death happened most notably in his lyrics. In his song Legends, he talks about dying at the age of 21, which ended up happening to him. In his song Wishing Well, he sings about how drugs will cause his death, which they ultimately did. Juice even mentioned that he thought he was going to die soon when recording for the song Smile. Between you and me, I think that I'm gonna die soon. It's cool. I got what's coming to me. Juice's song Confide has some of the most eerie lyrics because of how accurately they predicted how he passed. He mentions getting high before flight from LA to Chicago, the same route he flew the day of his passing. He then mentions something not feeling right and that he's scared of his own demise. He then describes himself bleeding out and when he actually passed, he was bleeding out from his mouth. He then talks about taking the drugs oxycodone and activist, which is known for codeine. Then his toxicology report found that he passed due to an overdose of oxycodone and codeine. Juice also stated that he and airports don't get along, then went on to die at an airport. Two weeks before Juice passed, he got a tattoo of himself as an angel. A week before his death, Juice tweeted about himself going down as a legend. In his song Legends, he described not wanting that title because all the legends seemed to die out, and shortly after calling himself one, he died. All legends fall in a make He sold his soul. Yeah. He sold his soul. In August of 2018, Juice World posted a video of himself saying that he's about to sell his soul. I, uh, 
I'm finna sell my soul. I'ma hit y'all when I'm through. I'ma be rich as hell. Alright? Look, look, look do sell soul. They ain't look take out. too long, Illuminati, man. <laughs> What'd you say, Cook? <laughs> Juice has also talked about selling his soul numerous times in his song. Nigga sold it, had a good soul, uh, till a nigga sold it. They want my soul, but it is in my property. I just sold my soul for a couple of Juice went on to clarify that he didn't actually ever sell his soul. Niggas really think I sold my soul? Y'all crazy as hell, boy. I'm a godfriend person, y'all ass slow. <laughs> this little soul of mine won't let it get intertwined. I can't let anybody have my soul. If you had it, give it back. I need it. Over the course of Juice World's career, he visibly gained a good amount of weight by the time he passed away. A lot of people made fun of him for it before he died. A meme even spawned from Juice's Bandit music video, where a screenshot of him with his stomach out was placed next to a picture of the cartoon character Chowder, whose main character trait is eating. That nigga Juice, that's the meme, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> you know what's crazy though? What? It's like. This shit funny to me though, like you know, I don't really, I don't yeah, really yeah, yeah. seriously, I be laughing with that shit. <laughs> Look, it's like the world ain't never seen no belly. <laughs> Everybody, I throw my dick so fast, like all the comments, they'd be like, um, 2019, I don't need no mind to be savage, 2020, Juice don't know. Juice was seemingly never bothered by the weight jokes and even typed LMFAO when responding to a comment saying that he was eating the pain away. Juice also mentioned his big stomach on the song Real Shit. Starfire, whose real name is Alexius Smith, is Juice World's ex who he dated before Ali Lottie. They lived together for a period of time before their split in the summer of 2018. Juice wrote songs about her and also featured her in his Lucid Dreams music video. One song he wrote about her is titled Love You Always or Starfire, and in the song he explains his true emotions and how she overall affected him and made him a better and more positive person at that time. After their breakup, Starfire made a video which is now deleted where she claimed that Juice cheated on her, was talking to another girl, and that he had no excuses except that he was an asshole. The whole time, like back when I thought that we were still good, right? Before the fighting, before all of that stuff. And so his excuse for cheating on me is that I treated him bad and that I said mean things to him, which I'll get into later on. Um, but basically, I'm debunking that excuse, so now he's left with no excuses at all except the fact that he's an asshole. This didn't go over well with Juice, so he took to Twitter to say that she treated him like shit, which is why he did the same to her. Juice's new girlfriend, Allie, responded to this tweet calling Starfire a silly girl who would do and say anything for Juice's attention. After Juice's passing, Starfire made a tribute post about Juice World where she stated, All I can say is that I never stopped loving you any less. You always said you wanted to change the world before you passed, and you did. You changed my world, your fans' worlds, and so many others. Bella is Juice World's ex, who we dated before Starfire. Not much is known about their relationship besides the fact that Juice was a senior in high school and Bella was a freshman during their relationship. After their breakup, Juice wrote songs about her, such as Lucid Dreams, which is reportedly about his past relationship with her. Juice's album Goodbye and Good Riddance was originally uploaded to SoundCloud under the title Fuck You Bella. All of the skits in the album were references to Bella as well, being titled Fuck You Bella, Bella's Betrayal, and Bella's Karma. A lot of the album was apparently about her. Bella ended up posting a screenshot of a conversation with Juice where he stated that the Fuck You Bella album title was not his idea. After Juice passed, Bella made a heartfelt tribute post about him on her Instagram, saying that they had a very happy and healthy relationship and that she'll never forget him. Something that put a sour taste in people's mouths is that she later made a TikTok post basically insulting Juice World fans. Yeah, what's your name? Jigga. Jigga. Yeah, your name is not on the list. You didn't even look yet. I don't have to look. What do you mean? Motel 6 is right across the street. But I booked here. No, you did not. I don't her see TikTok it. account has since been deleted, and so is her known Instagram account. G Money's Lil Bibby's brother, who he launched Grade A Productions with in 2017. Juice credited G Money as the one who discovered him and blew him up. So, oh, pretty much that man over there, G Money, that's the person that discovered me and really blew me up. What mm -hmm. up, G Money? Took me to the label. That's the CEO right there. Mm -hmm. okay. so I'm big brother. So, like. Hearing the song All Girls Are The Same is what made G-Money want to sign Juice. Shortly after being signed, the two became good friends. Juice even bought him a Lamborghini in 2018. Juice has also praised G-Money many times in his lyrics, like on the song No Good. Knowledge, I'm gonna tell you how I started. It's a one phone call from 
DJ Scheme is a producer and artist who's a part of XXX Tentacion's members only collective and was close friends with Juice World. Bitch, stop playing Tell with me. Tell uh, I'm, I'm directing a game. It's gonna be Juice featuring. <laughs> DJ Scheme also produced a variety of songs for Juice, such as Conversations, Too Many, Buck 50, and Coraline. After Juice passed, Scheme was distraught, especially since he had just lost his friend XXXTentacion 18 months prior. Scheme has since started using Juice's voice as his producer tag. Juice revealed that in his stage name, the word Juice stemmed from the Tupac-inspired high-top Juice haircut he used to have and the word world initially had no meaning, but then he came to think it represents him trying to take over the world. I had the haircut, like the juice cut, like Tupac, the one he had in the movie. I think world came from me spelling it wrong. I think I was making like an account on something, and I spelled it wrong because world was actually taking like the actual spelling. I took it as just for me like trying to take over the world and it being my world. Juice World loved showing his fans love back, as was seen numerous times in clips throughout his career. through certain shit for a reason like it's everything happened for a reason sometimes you go through fucked up shit so you become stronger people so you just always got to remember that and keep your head up through any situation in july of 2019 juice world took on the hot ones challenge of eating 10 spicy chicken wings with increasing scoville units up to 2 million in between eating the wings, he was being interviewed and spoke on many subjects like his dirt bike obsession, the peel of Percy Jackson novels, and the reason you shouldn't pigeonhole SoundCloud rappers. Juice impressively went on to perform a set of songs shortly after eating all 10 spicy wings. In April of 2019, Juice Ward went sneaker shopping with Complex, where he ended up setting a record for the most money spent in an episode after spending $42,032.28 on shoes, clothes, and accessories for he and his girlfriend. $42,032.28. What if I didn't have a car? Broke nigga <laughs> alert. Broke nigga alert. Uh -huh. 999 Club is the name of Juice World's merch store that sells Juice World inspired outerwear, tops, bottoms, accessories, posters, and vinyls. The merchandise is primarily sold on the 999club.com website, but they also did a collaboration with Zoomies and sold merch in their stores as well. They recently did a collaboration with Naruto in December of 2021. Jared Anthony Higgins is Juice World's full real name. A little over a month before Juice World's death, a challenge was trending on TikTok called the hashtag Lucid Dreams Challenge. This challenge consisted of people doing a dance to the song Lucid to dreams until a part came up where the beat got choppy, then they would pretend to have a seizure while spitting out liquid. At the time of Juice's death, nearly 3 million TikTok videos used the Lucid Dreams Challenge hashtag, and over 350,000 clips were made with the skipping audio used in the challenge. A lot of people went back to old videos of this challenge to tell people who did the challenge that they predicted Juice World's death. Less people participated in the challenge after Juice's death out of respect, there were still some edgy kids who thought it was cool to mock someone who passed away. Around late 2021, the sound made a small resurgence with people using the nostalgia card with captions like, who remembers this challenge? I personally think it's disrespectful to be faking seizures online, especially over a song by someone who died from a seizure. As you may have been able to tell from some of his music, Juice suffered from depression. 
He's mentioned it numerous times in his song lyrics. Juice World's ex stated that the reason he took a lot of drugs was to cope with his depression. After Juice passed, his mom made a statement about how her son was battling depression along with prescription drug dependency. Juice also struggled with anxiety, which he mentioned a lot in his music. A lot of the lyrics Juice World used in his songs can be seen as a sort of call or cry for help with his drug addiction. He's even talked about how he isn't okay, but tells people that he is so they don't worry about him. In a leaked song called Help Me 27 Club, Juice is almost begging someone to help him, repeating the line help me 10 times, as well as acknowledging that he has to sober up or he will lose himself in the process. The entire song is about his addiction and how it's making him run out of time, and also about how he doesn't know what to do, so he calls out for help. After Juice passed, his mom Carmela Wallace was quoted saying, as he often cried out in his music and to his fans, Jared battled with prescription drug dependency and depression. It's really sad that Juice didn't get the help he needed in time. Tell Me Why is a Juice World tribute song released on July 17th, 2020 by the Kid Leroy. In the song, he referenced how he watched Juice World die as he was with him the day he passed. The song is about how the Kid Leroy had lost people and how it's so hard to say goodbye to them. In June of 2019, Juice World would say that he was in heaven during an Instagram Live. I'm on Instagram Live from heaven. <laughs> I made it, y'all. I'm up here. I'm born. Forever. <laughs> this live was later turned into the outro for his first posthumously released album, Legends Never Die. I'm on Instagram live from heaven. Huh. I made it, yo. I'm up here. Boy. Juice World 999 is Juice's third mixtape, which served as his debut full length EP. Project released on June 15, 2017, and it delves deep into the staples of emo rap with recurring themes such as broken relationships and drug abuse. One month after the EP's release, Lucid Dreams was added to the track list, which became by far the biggest hit from the EP. Let Me Know and Moonlight are two other songs from this EP that saw a good amount of success. The songs from this project were the first videos Juice World would post to his YouTube channel. Live Free 999 is a fun that Juice's mother created after his passing in hopes to prevent others from meeting the same fate as her son. She was inspired to name the foundation Live Free 999 after looking at a picture of Juice wearing a jean jacket he had bought from a thrift store that he painted Live Free on the back of. The goal of the fund is to support programs that provide preventative measures and positive avenues to address mental health challenges and substance dependency. On their website, it states, through financial grants and partnerships, Live Free 999 will bolster organizations providing positive mental health treatments and alternatives to drug use. As of the making of this video, the fund has raised about $33,000. 713-999-6031 is Juice World's phone number that he gave out for fans who wanted to talk to him. I'm gonna give you my number. So, if you need to talk about anything, if you need to reach me, uh, I'm just going ahead and get my number to y'all. So, all my fans can have it. 713-999-6031. Um, the number is also in his Instagram bio where he stated that he would text you back. On December 9th, 2021, Juice's team celebrated the first Juice World Day. The event took place at the United Center in Chicago and consisted of a Fighting Demons listening party and an Into the Abyss documentary preview. It featured guest performances from Ski Master Slump God, DJ Scheme, and Trippy Red, among others. At the end of Trippy Red's set, he poured out a bottle of lean on stage in Juice World's honor. RP Juice World, I love y'all, thank you. There was also heartfelt speeches by Juice World's mother and Cole Bennett. The whole event was live streamed by Amazon Music. The event ended with Juice getting his own banner raised in the arena. In June of 2022, Juice World's former manager made a comment saying Juice World Day Year 2 planning has started. This was followed by a comment saying party starts soon, alluding to the event being a release for the album The Party Never Ends. Juice the Kid was the stage name Juice used before becoming Juice World. Juice the fucking kid. Yeah, my man's brand on the camera and shit. <laughs> I'm broke. His early tracks from his first and second years of high school released under the name Juice the Kid. 
He then changed his name to Juice World because he and his associates believed that the change would benefit his career. He also very briefly performed under the name Juice in 2017 before reverting back to Juice World. In 2019, Juice World was given the option to be an XXL freshman, but he turned it down. Why aren't I in double XL? Oh, I turned it down. That's why. He was already big at this point and didn't really need any of the publicity XXL could give him. On April 25th, 2017, Juice World made a tweet saying that his goal is to get overly famous, shine for a couple years, then fake his death. He would go on to perfectly hit the first two points of his goal, getting overly famous and shining for a couple years, then he would pass away, leading some to believe that he successfully hit on all three parts of his goal and faked his death. In March of 2021, these rumors would heat up when the artist Clever released an album where the first letter of each song put together reads, Juice World is alive, with 999 in between. Clever was very close with Juice and even had other references to him in the album, along with a feature from him. The album was even originally planned to release on December 8th, which was the day Juice World died. While some believe that Juice may have faked his death, others believe that the reference from Clever was just referring to Juice being alive through his music. A week before Juice World passed away, he was convinced to go to rehab. He had an intervention where Ali, Lil Bibby, Max Lord, and Juice's cousin, among others, all expressed their worries with his drug use. This happened after Bibby found out that Juice was taking over four Percocet pills at a time. Bibby described how Juice responded to their request for him to go to rehab. Uh, okay. He said, all right, I'll go, but I'm not stopping. Like, right. I'll, I'll lower my dosage, da da da. But I like, like, he said, I like doing it too much. Like, I ain't stopping. In February of 2022, a documentary was released by BBC titled Legends Never Die that covered the deceased artists Lil Peep, XXX Tentacion, and Juice World. It didn't go much into depth about Juice World as it mainly focused on how the hip hop stars are dying younger than ever, like more of a 21 club rather than 27 club. They're like, he used a hard ER. Fuck me. Juice World used the N word with the hard ER sometimes in his lyrics and in clips. Juice explained his reasoning for using the word in a reaction video with Zia's. Hey, I'm gonna tell you because niggas be tweaking, bro. Yeah. And when a nigga really tweaking, you gotta be like put a nigga in a place. Like, don't get me wrong, I love all my brothers and sisters, bro, but right. it's on some confidence. Right, right, yeah, yeah, right, for right, sure. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. talking your shit. Googly is the name of a leaker who's been leaking Juice World songs since 2019. He's one of the main and most known leakers in the Juice World community. He is also extremely polarizing because some love that he leaks songs that may have never been released, and others despise that he's profiting off of a dead man that he never knew. He's even gotten into arguments with people close to Juice, such as DJ Scheme. He also hacked Juice's Finsta, along with his ex Starfire's Finsta. Before the release of Juice's first posthumous album, Legends Never Die, Googly leaked the four interludes in the album. Googly was also a part of what was called Grail Summer, where a bunch of Juice songs were leaked in the summer of 2021. The second most known Juice World leaker is named Lucky, and he would buy a bunch of Juice leaks to later sell and brag about. He ended up getting arrested after allegedly stealing $46 million in cryptocurrency from someone. Daniel is the name of another well-known Juice leaker. Juice said he hated the people leaking his music, and after his death, people are selling his songs for extremely high prices when the money should be going to Juice's family or label. In an interview with Vlad TV, Lil Bibby stated that he has around 3,000 Juice World songs that aren't released. How many songs do you have of his? Like, maybe like 3,000. Wait, 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 wait. You have 3,000 songs. <laughs> or, or more. I'll be finding more songs. Oh no, that kid was crazy. Less than four months before Juice's passing, Young Thug confirmed that he and Juice were working on a collab project. Young Thug, where are you at with your joint project with Juice World? Is that true? Are you guys oh doing gosh, something? Bro. Yes. Yes. <laughs> How far along? I'm like three months. The project was first teased in 2018, but was put on pause due to the passing of Juice World. The project began being talked about again in 2021, because on December 10th, after Lil Bibby was asked if he would consider making an album with Juice and another artist, he answered saying, I'm not sure about that. 
maybe Young Thug because I know what they were working on, and they've got like 20 plus songs already. It is currently unknown when or if this project will be released. Juice World said that his musical influences were genre-wide from rock to rap music, and that his biggest influences were rappers Travis Scott, Eminem, Kanye West, Chief Keef, and British rock singer Billy Idol. His old Instagram account was also flooded with posts quoting Tyler the Creator, who was also a big influence to Juice as well. Juice World got part of his name from Tupac and said that he wouldn't be where he is without him. Juice World like Pac, shout out to Pac. Without him, I wouldn't be here, believe it or not. Shout out to Eminem, same situation. I Juice World took heavy influence from his favorite rappers, which include Lil Wayne, Kanye West, Kid Cudi, and Future. Juice World previously credited albums such as Kanye West's 808s and Heartbreak as direct influences on his genre-bending style of rapping. In a 2018 interview when talking about 808s and Heartbreak, Juice stated, I think I kind of live with that record on my shoulder. Lucid Dreams Part 2 is the name given to a leaked Juice World song, also called Plug. The reason for the Lucid Dreams Part 2 name comes from a line referencing the original song, as well as the theme of the song being similar, with the topic being him going through a constant struggle to find the love and connection he craves, and how he believes every relationship or connection he's made or will make will likely end the exact same, doomed to always be lucid dreaming about the latest heartbreak. Goodbye and Good Riddance 2 is a potential upcoming album from Juice, serving as a sequel to his debut studio album of the same name. The album was first teased by Lil Bibby when he commented under an Instagram post by Rap TV in October of 2021. The post stated, name an album that needs a part 2, and Bibby commented saying goodbye and good riddance with a 2 and eyeballs emoji. It is currently unknown when or if the album will see the light of day, as all of the information provided so far is speculative. Blessed Boys is the name of an unreleased collab project by Juice World and Lil Yachty. In mid-2021, the project was brought up on an Aiden Ross Twitch stream. That fucking Yachty named it. Yachty said the entire... Yachty and uh, Juice have an entire, I don't know if it's a project. Yachty, Yachty and Juice have a full 12 songs, and he sent me the whole thing. So I, it's like, it's called, uh, what is it called? Blessed Boys, I think. Lil Yachty himself said that the album would be dropping, but since Juice World passed, it's still unclear whether it will actually drop or not. A Naruto Date in London is an unreleased Juice World album that was supposedly comprised of love songs about Ali Lati and would serve as the sequel to Death Race for Love. Ali confirmed the existence of the project on an Instagram Live. <laughs> a Naruto Date in London. And he wanted to go ahead and just put He didn't just do that. Yeah, but... The actual tracklist is unknown, but some fans have predicted certain songs to be on the project based off of their lyrics. It is unknown when or if this project is going to be released. During Juice World's Death Race for Love tour, he changed the lyrics to his song Robbery during a concert to reference his girlfriend Ali. She told me put my heart in a bag, and I'll never get hurt. I'm not running for my love, I'm not fast, I'm feeling better. This was not a one-time thing, as he did it multiple times when performing the song with her on tour. When you look up the music video to Juice's song Moonlight, you'll only be able to find a snippet of it slightly over a minute long, or someone extending the snippet to make it seem longer. The reason for this is that the official music video never released, and the clip people are posting was a preview posted online around late 2017. Juice's close friend Macman said the rest of the video is only a cinematic sequence just like the clip. Juice World has a signature dance move that he did frequently. The move consisted of one hand facing up and one hand facing down, then moving one arm up and down repeatedly with the other arm doing the same in reverse, all while moving the leg of the hand that is facing down as well to match the arm's movement. Uh, I 
feel like Tim Hardaway in the fourth the way I handle it. Yeah, I feel like Tim Westwood in the fourth the way I'm saying shit. Uh, the NLMB is a gang in Chicago that was originally formed from the merger of No Limit and Muskegon Boys. NLMB stands for Never Leave My Brothers, and Juice World had connections to the group mainly because of Lil Bibby. Through Bibby, he met G Herbo and other members of NLMB. Juice occasionally spit bars about NLMB in his music. Oh, no limit, that's on a daily. Uh He's even dissed rival gang members like on the song Cash Out where he disses a dead member of the gang Lakeside. Smoking pasta I pass out. He's been seen throwing up NLMB related gang signs as well. Juice even ended up getting NLMB tatted on the upper side of his right arm. During an interview for the Atom Bomb show in 2018, Juice World fell asleep mid-interview while being asked a question. Right. So like it's kind of a I'm on the fence about it. Yeah. So Juice World on the Atom Bomb show, we just added Lucid Dreams, man. I want you to describe that song. When I heard it. Man, it's deep. It's some good stuff. It's not just fluff. It's like a lot. Of, it's like a lot of heart going into it. I want you to describe that single and that track that we're playing right now. Hey, give me, give me a little bit more on, on Lucid Dreams. Describe that track to me. Oh, um, my apologies. Um. That's all right. In 2017, Spotify's Rap Caviar created a real-world pantheon, showing off life-size sculptures of the biggest breakthrough artists of the year. In 2019, Juice was given his own life-size sculpture to join the pantheon. His sculpture was inspired by the idea of the mythological Greek titan Atlas, who was condemned to carry the universe at rest, a nod to the vulnerability in his music. Juice visited the sculpture in April of 2019. Chase the Dragon, Life's a Dungeon is the title of a song Juice made as a tribute to his late father who passed away on June 2nd, 2019. Juice previewed the song on IG Live a day after his father's passing, pinning his message saying, This for you, Pops. The song fully leaked on June 15th, 2020. Making a song for motherfucking Sonic Hedgehog. Song. I remember that. Oh yeah. With, with Love that song. song in ten minutes, ten but minutes. he rapping about Sonic and he yeah. making that shit sound like some shit you were here in the club. I'm like, what the fuck? Keep Up is an unreleased track by Juice that was reportedly supposed to feature on the Sonic the Hedgehog movie soundtrack, but was ultimately scrapped. The song was all about running fast, flooded with various Sonic references. The track was first previewed on July 23rd, 2020, when a snippet of the track appeared on file sharing websites. It ended up leaking in its entirety on August 5th, 2020. Juice World had many of his studio sessions leaked online, containing extended verses that didn't make the final songs. An example of a song that had its studio session leaked is Smile, which contains four Juice verses that didn't make the final song. A bye, drink the whole pint tonight, ho, being I die tonight, ho, being I'm set free. Some fans also place instrumentals over the leaked studio sessions to make them into full songs. Enough, I'm not enough, I haven't had. During an Instagram live, the rapper Lucky explained the story of when he scammed Juice World before he blew up, taking $200 from him without giving a feature in return. That's the f Juice World bought a feature from me. And I finessed it for a feature, right? But it was cheap, like $200, $300 type shit. That's when we both was teenagers, right? He then went on to describe how Juice messaged him after he blew up, saying he didn't care about their past interaction, but Lucky responded rudely, thinking it was someone else messaging him. I had, at the time I had the much, I'm like, yo, bro, my bad, my bad, bro, yeah, yeah, I ain't realize this was, that was you. But he's such a good person, he ain't even like, care. Yeah, he realized like, cause I, he already knew, like, he was like, that's why I DM'd you inside and care about it, bro, cause, Come on, I get how, like, you all realized, like, you was just off the hands trying to get some, you was a kid trying to get some money. So I realized that. And that's what made us close as fuck. Like, the first day we met, we was real life supposed to, supposed to, uh, do a song. But I just fell asleep, high as fuck. Like, backwards. On October 17th, 2019, Juice partnered with McDonald's and Genius to put on a free show in his hometown of Chicago to give back to a community organization. Juice stated, I partnered with McDonald's to do a free show and donated some money for this mentor program that I was in as a child. The program he was referring to is called 100 Black Men of Chicago, and it's a civic organization whose purpose is to improve the quality of life and enhance educational opportunities of African American men throughout the greater Chicago area. The group focuses on mentoring, health and wellness, economic development, and leadership development. Juice was quoted saying, growing up in Chicago, I was a part of 100 black men. It connected me with positive role models and mentors that I want other kids today to have in their lives. 
The RSVPs for Juice's free concert in Chicago sold out in an hour and a half. During the concert, Juice will deliver an hour-long set, performing fan favorites such as Lucid Dreams. In 2018, Juice World appeared in a Foot Locker ad alongside a group of other celebrities. Different. That's why Foot Locker's bringing back the week of greatness. A week of the freshest drops for people who put sneakers first. He also appeared in their ad a year later, which was shown during the Super Bowl. Is it dead? Glass not dead. Juice also did a freestyle for Foot Locker in 2018, where he spit bars about shoes while also shouting out Foot Locker. Shoes got me confident, I feel like running for mayor. Hit Foot Locker with fat pockets, buy a couple of pairs. Wear them to school the next day, they stop and stare. Like, he got the good money, like he from the Bel Air. On June 30th, 2019, Juice World threw the first pitch at a Chicago White Sox game. Chicago, this is Chicago, man. He probably nervous. Juice ended up signing the ball and giving it to a fan afterward. Juice World was not only a vocalist, as he knew how to play instruments as well. He learned to play the piano at four years old, having been inspired by his mom. He then took up the guitar and drums while also playing the trumpet for band class. Juice also taught himself how to play the keyboard by watching YouTube videos. In a leaked essay of Juice's, he wrote that he played a total of seven instruments. During an interview a month after XXXTentacion passed away, Juice described how they had planned to hang out together. Yeah, I never met him. Me and X planned to hang out. We had a couple like deep conversations, talked on the phone a few times. Um, he had nothing but positive mm -hmm. stuff to say. For real, for real. From his point of view, we didn't really see eye to eye like that, but he had nothing but positive. I re we had respect for each other at the end of the day. And that was, that's what was going to kind of lead into a friendship. Juice World has been name dropped two times in questions on the game show Jeopardy. One question read, meaning clearly understood, it preceded dreams in the title of a 2018 smash by Juice World. The answer was lucid. The other question read, in a collaboration with late Juice World, this Detroit man rapped, I can swallow a bottle of alcohol and I'll feel like Godzilla. The answer was Eminem. Juice was a big fan of dirt bike riding. He's been seen several times on dirt bikes and has been recorded showing off his collection of them as well. Show me what the fuck you got all these bikes for, man? Stupid rich ass bitch. Look at this. Look at this. What the fuck is wrong with you? My baby right here. This is the baby right here. Yeah, I'm on mama number, big boy. Yeah, this is the one right here. The red bull one, y'all. Yeah. On everything. Yeah, these bitches are stupid. No capping. Yeah. Damn. Uh, Juice has also mentioned dirt bikes in his lyrics. I'm a dirt bike riding junk, come on. He even has an unreleased song called Dirt Bike that is all about riding them. Dirt bike, I just make crash at the turnpike. Don't let left and I turn right. I've been riding dirt bikes all night. Juice also told a story of a dirt bike crash he had with ski masks. I was riding dirt bikes and I, I crashed. I, like, I pretty much outrun it. <laughs> this nigga crashed. I crashed into this lady's it's, bushes. This nigga crashed into some old lady bushes and I came on back. a motorbike. He came back like, yeah, nothing really happened. He was like, I kind of hit some bushes, but the lady just came outside and was like, chill. Nigga, what really happened? Yeah, boom, into, boom. Into that lady was like, You crashed into my house? Yeah, I crashed. Into, I, yeah. <laughs> In 2019, Juice World let XXL capture a paintball excursion at Hollywood Sports Paintball and Airsoft Park in Bellflower, California. Juice was with his cousins, longtime friends, the kid Leroy, FaZe Adapt, Chris Long, Ben Lidsky, and Brother Nature. Come on, y'all over here. They all on this side, bro. Juice World once played G Herbo 1v1 in basketball for $5,000. Then, after he lost, bet another $5,000. The games were recorded by G Money. Damn, I ain't even get the game point on that, man. You just lost $5,000. That easy, man. What you got to say, Juice? Fuck. That was easier than the feature. So, y'all gonna run it back for five more? Now, I like seeing him with something, I heard. He ain't got much, you know. Like he... I don't like seeing him with too much, you buddy. <laughs> you say he look better broke, huh? Look better broke, you buddy. <laughs> I love 10,000. <laughs> Damn! 
Game point. That's ten thousand. Hurry away, man. Damn, juice. I tried to save you, man. Don't say I didn't. In January of 2019, Juice went to Culture Kings in Melbourne, where he broke someone's ankles during a one-on-one. In March of 2022, Juice's former manager said that they've been trying to get Juice World into Fortnite. Hey, Juice World on Fortnite. We've been trying our hardest. Um, and that's also work in progress. We actually got a meeting. Uh, in June of 2022, when Fortnite was preparing for the Chapter 3 Season 3 update, they made a tweet saying, almost time to start the party, which Bibi retweeted. Once the update came out on June 5th, a new loading screen showing a big concert location contained the text, The Party Never Ends, which is the title of Juice's upcoming album. This may be hinting to a Juice World event in Fortnite, or maybe even a listening party to The Party Never Ends. Whenever Lil Bibby is asked about the release dates for Juice World music, he frequently responds with the word, soon. It's become a meme in the Juice World community because of how often he says it, even when nothing actually comes soon. You can do anything is a motivational message that Juice would tell his supporters frequently. You can do anything you put your mind to. Like you can do anything you put your mind to. Always remember that you can do anything you put your mind to. This is your world. You can do whatever you want to do. You can do whatever the f you want to do in this life. It don't matter. This world is yours, bro. You can do whatever the fuck you want to do. Literally, you just got to go get it. Wise words. Juice World's first official release on SoundCloud is his song Forever, which he released under the name Juice the Kid, but there are other songs which Juice apparently recorded before it. The two songs people claim is Juice's very first song are Only For You and Turkey Burgers. Only For You is a song sampling Anita Baker's Whatever It Takes, where Juice confesses his feelings to a girl. See the fuck shit in a rear view, it appears that it's clear to just a bill to you, half if you gotta keep it real for you and just hope that you listen. listen. This song was apparently deleted off of Juice's SoundCloud in 2014, and it resurfaced on January 15th, 2019. Turkey Burgers is a song Juice recorded in 2014 using Smule, a karaoke app that automatically mixes your vocals. This song surfaced on July 15th, 2021. Juiced Up the EP is Juice's debut project that released on January 30th, 2016. The EP features six songs in total, most of which being lower quality drug-induced freestyles. The lyrics are centered around Juice's cutthroat lifestyle, and on many of the tracks, he humbles himself on his looks, money, and sexual relations. The earliest preview of this project being made was in December of 2015, when Juice previewed the song Woe to his Twitter account. The first time Juice would appear in a music video was on January 14th, 2016 for his song AA. The music video was uploaded to Xantanavision's YouTube channel. The video shows a young Juice smiling and getting hyped with a friend. Yo girl gon' fuck uh, another day, ay. Papa Zan, what can I fucking say, ay. Juice World's first paid gig was in 2017, where he performed at a rec center in Chicago for mostly his friends and family. This performance earned him a mere $100. Revolt TV was quoted saying, the crowd, which was comprised of classmates and friends, was receptive to the music and foreshadowed even more paid gigs as the rapper cashed out with $100 for the performance. In 2020, Juice's mom posted a photo from after the performance showing Juice holding up the $100 he made. D underscore G underscore A underscore F is the handle of Juice's old Instagram account that he used in 2012. The account consists of pictures of a 13-year-old Juice, memes, and inspirational quotes mostly from Tyler the Creator. Almost all of the comments on every post on the account consist of people repeating the same phrase exactly relating to the photo. Godly X Ferris was Juice's old Instagram handle before he changed it to Juice World 999. <laughs> Shortly after Juice World passed away, hackers found a way to upload songs to Juice's YouTube channel using an app of some sorts. They used it to post unreleased Juice music like the song Jack and Jill, which was posted on February 2nd, 2020. The person who posted the song linked their Instagram in the description of the video in a clout chasing attempt. These unofficial uploads would continue in July when someone uploaded the song Underworld or Demon Girl Part 2 to his channel. They also made a playlist with a remix of the song Run containing a random no-name feature. I, take, I want to take a video of you saying, telling tell my mom I should not go to school tomorrow. I can't encourage that. <laughs> There are two old videos of Juice in high school participating in rap battles against his classmates. 
fast like a crackhead. Thinking that you win it, but you don't know this. Focus. Now nah, I got ADD. Now nah, I'm swarming like locusts. Who is this? Making hand signs like you're deaf or something. That's okay. I'll be on the beat. Spinning fast like Crystal Left or something. Really, it's nothing. Making assumptions. It's nothing. Bakey won't put you in the oven for no reason or something. I'm the best. This contest is over. I'm high off everything except being sober. I told mm. you wrong school. I'm never oh, taking shit. L's, but I never do homework. Killing I'm your out shit. Like what? A nigga what? With a bone in my homo. I rock supreme. That's that box logo. Promo. Oh no. Here's the dude. That's no joke. Right, Joker shit. though. I got that Joker flow to make you hold your nose and you're sniffing coke. Nine, Who's oh, this? Eight, you exist? Seven. Nah, not to me. I'm R. Kelly, nigga. You can get the piss. Ooh. 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 Hey, Caleb, Caleb, get me, get me, get me, get me. The high school Juice went to was Homewood Flossmore High School, and he ended up returning after his blow up to perform. The rapper Young Dolph is related to Juice World being his blood cousin. This was revealed on Dolph's Instagram in a heartfelt tribute post he made after Juice's passing. In the post, Dolph reminisced over all the things he never got to do with Juice that he was looking forward to doing. Tragically, Dolph also passed away young. He was in Memphis for his annual Thanksgiving giveaway and was on his way to the event to hand out turkeys when he stopped at a bakery and was fatally shot. Dolph was just 36 years old when he passed away on November 17th, 2021. Juice had a dog named Layla that he mentioned in lyrics before. I miss my mom, I miss my friends, I miss my house, I miss my pet, Layla Fetch. He also had two dogs with Ali named Kaplan and River. One of them was caught crying when Juice's music was being played after his passing. I was a fan of Yu-Gi-Oh, that's why I pull cards on these stupid hoes. Juice World was a big fan of Yu-Gi-Oh. He said he didn't really watch the series, but he loved playing the card game. Juice actually planned to get a chain matching the one Yu-Gi-Oh had on, but he wasn't able to, and Ski Mask got it in his honor. <laughs> this is the um, the chain that Yu-Gi-Oh had on, the actual chain that Yu-Gi-Oh had on. This was like a tribute piece, kind of. Me and Juice World was talking about him getting this piece in general, and since he wasn't able to do it, I just decided to do it myself. Juice was an anime fan and expressed his interest in making one himself. Two weeks before his passing, he began working with the revered Japanese artist Takashi Murakami to try and make this dream a reality. Takashi was already heavily involved in the hip hop scene, having worked on artwork with the likes of Kanye West, Kid Cudi, Drake, and ASAP Rocky, among others. Takashi stated, I was a big fan of Juice World. He came to my studio, he looked so happy with his girlfriend. He wanted to make some animation project, a kind of demon and angel battle. Unfortunately, Juice World died just a couple weeks later and the project couldn't move forward. Juice Virtual World is a virtual garden that serves as a tribute to Juice. The virtual garden is inspired by a real memorial garden created by Juice's mom. The garden contains a 999 vault with old photos of Juice as well as his rap caviar statue. There is also a graffiti wall where you can leave a message for Juice. Juice World's song Autograph was actually inspired by a real encounter Juice had on Twitter. The story began on July 19th, 2017, when Juice tweeted pictures of himself with a choker on, with the caption stating, giving in to my primal instincts. The response that started all the drama was from a user named Lil Daryl Guwap, who called Juice Lil Uzi Dirt. Juice responded saying Daryl looked like Ugly God and was acting like a Twitter bitch. Daryl then said, I'm on your ass, son. Need to give that choker back to whoever Pitbull you stole it from. A user by the name of Newport100SS then jumped in in Juice's defense and stated, Everybody do what they do for a reason. Trying to get some clout off a of fake Uzi, not finna do shit for you, little dude. Daryl then said, I don't need clout, bruh. If that's your boy, tell hi, stop biting cause he going out bad. Juice then finished the conversation with the tweet that inspired his song Autograph. It read, bro, why is you still commenting on my shit? Stop acting like a Twitter bitch. You look like a fan. You want an autograph or some? Just eight days after this tweet, Juice would release his song Autograph on my line, which contained various references to the previous Twitter interaction. The song opened with Juice saying, why you mad four times in a row, potentially referring to Daryl. He then mentions someone throwing shade at him, which is likely referring to Daryl calling him Lil Uzi Dirt. Then during the chorus, Juice spit the line, yeah, I rock a choker with a 45, referencing Daryl's tweet telling him to give his choker back to the pit bull he stole it from, while also taunting that he owns a gun. Later in the chorus, Juice said, let me guess, you're my biggest fan, right? You wanted an autograph, all you had to do was ask. This was a direct reference to Juice's final tweet in the interaction with Daryl, when he said he looked like a fan and asked him if he wanted an autograph. At the beginning of the first verse, Juice then said, up on Twitter and you looking mad, talking about me, but you looking bad, likely referencing the Twitter feud with Daryl. For the rest of the song, Juice talks about his haters, which could or could not be referring to Daryl as well. Juice World's song Burn was inspired by a dream he had that he said he never woke up from. 
Ali was quoted saying, I used to cry my eyes out to this song before he even passed away because of how personal it is. It was about a dream he had while we were in Germany. I was trying to wake him up because he would have jolts and shit in his dream, and I was like, get the fuck up, like screaming, and my scream woke him up, but he told me later that he never woke up from the dream, and that's why he made the song. Juice also talked about the lyrics that are direct references to that incident. It was like, when I was like, uh, Look at my girl in the eyes, tell her I won't oh, die. God. I fell asleep too deep yeah. that one time. Welcome to her crying. Welcome to your crying girl. Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, God. But I lied. And oh, God. I wasn't going to wake up this time. Well, that's some shit. That's on oh, God. That's no cap. I was a lot of shit on my head, and I was like, it was the first day I had, like, you know what? Like, I had, first day I had really, like, thought about, like, making better choices in life. Juice World has stated multiple times that he thought his breakout hit would be his song Moonlight, and that he didn't expect Lucid Dreams to be a hit. I didn't think Lucid Dreams would be no damn hit. I thought Moonlight was on, on the original project before I was famous. Lucid Dreams was the smash mm -hmm. everybody loved. Now, what was the idea and the feeling of, of Lucid Dreams? And then on the original mixtape that it was on, I didn't think that was going to be the, like, it was just another song. Like, mm -hmm. obviously, I liked it enough to put it on the project, but mm -hmm. I didn't think that was going to be the smash. I had a song called Moonlight on the tape, and I thought that was going to be the smash, mm -hmm. but Lucid Dreams, the one that blew up, so... Juice World once pranked an entire Rolling Loud crowd with a Fromunda joke. Hey, have y'all had this restaurant called Fromunda? Fromunda these nice. Girl's about to leave me because I lost my jewels and I don't know what to do with my life. Literally, find your jewels. You got the same you number? Know, I don't find it. You're going to leave me and I'm going to die. That's sad, boy. Is it this one? Seven, yeah. seven, Forever. Seven. Forever. Forever. Can't find this fucking girl. She broke up with me over it. I still see a shadow in my name. <laughs> Juice World once exposed a fan who was grabbing his meat during a performance. This your cloth, by the way. Can I keep it? Yeah, That's for the one hey, time. That's for the, the one time. was grabbing my dick. I hope you want one of y'all. If I was a girl, I finesse every nigga in the world and still only eat pussy. <laughs> Juice World has only had one other job besides music. Before Juice blew up, he worked in a car factory while still releasing projects and songs on SoundCloud, but he was dissatisfied with the factory job and fired within two weeks. I had one job, I had one uh, legal job. <laughs> uh, that's wild, this dude right here got me the job. That's wild, you just so happen to be sitting there. <laughs> that's my cousin, he got me my first job. My, only, my first and only job at a car factory on some, um, on some eight mile shit, some B-Rabbit shit. I was uh, making car parts and shit. I made them little handles that be inside that people be putting their clothes and holding on to when they think they finna die and shit. I made them handles and then, yeah, I probably worked there for like two, three weeks. Y'all nigga got fired. After Juice passed away, Ali posted pictures of a poem he wrote for her on October 27th, 2018. The poem is all about his feelings for Ali. You can pause now if you want to read the whole thing. She also shared another poem Juice wrote about her on the back of two Hyatt Regency papers. Once again, you can pause if you'd like to read the full poem. In March of 2022, an old high school essay of Juice World's Leap. The first page of the essay is all about rap music, covering its history, and how it became as popular as it is today. The second page of the essay reads more like a college application letter. He begins the second page talking about his high school experience and how music got him through it all. He compared his time in high school to an adventure because of all the ups and downs he experienced. He takes accountability for his low GPA and states that it doesn't reflect his true intellectual ability. He then cites his ACT score as an example, which he scored a 24 on then his reading score of 31, which places him in the 89th percentile. He then goes on to talk about his ADD, which he was diagnosed with in fourth grade, and how it affected his focus in a traditional school setting. Juice then once again talks about music and how it was his motivation to be successful. He mentioned how in his junior year of high school, he began to chase his dream of becoming a recording artist. In the final paragraph, Juice talks about his interest in Columbia College and how hard he will work if he's accepted in. He said he wanted to major in audio recording and minor in fashion design. Juice's mom banned rap in her household because she was afraid that such music would bring a terrible influence to young Juice. Juice's mom was very religious and conservative and decided to not let him listen to hip hop. Juice stated, My mom was real conservative on some old hardcore Christian. He was allowed to listen to rock and pop music and was introduced to artists such as Billy Idol, Blink 182, 
Black Sabbath, Fall Out Boy, Megadeth, and Panic at the Disco through video games such as Tony Hawk's Pro Skater and Guitar Hero. Thanks to his cousins, Juice finally picked up interest in hip-hop after they introduced him to the likes of Chief Keef, Gucci Mane, and Young Jeezy. The earliest tracks that Juice posted online were recorded on his cell phone. Juice was quoted saying, I started recording in my sophomore year in high school. I recorded things on my cell phone in my basement. The earliest song on Juice World SoundCloud forever was recorded on his cell phone. The Twilight Zone EP was Juice's second ever project that released on July 6th, 2016 under the name Juice the Kid. This project ended up being deleted in late 2017 due to SoundCloud's upload limit, making it a lost EP. The EP contained five tracks featuring repetitive choruses and laid-back vocal performances. It was recorded sometime in March of 2016 at Envion Recording Studios, and a good portion of the recording process was recorded and posted on YouTube. Uh, Juice also said he was drunk while recording the EP. Hey, my man's brand new on the camera and shit. <laughs> I'm bro. I'm drunk as fuck. We finna do it. <laughs> The music video for Juice's song Dreams is his least known about music video, currently sitting at under 100,000 views. The song itself released on July 6th, 2016 as a part of the Twilight Zone project, but the music video didn't come out until December 12th, 2019, four days after Juice's passing. Juice appeared to be in high spirits during the filming of this video, smiling and dancing throughout it. She said that I'm pretty, hey, I should be around in the city, hey, go to me feeling like daddy, hey. Juice World said that he hated his song, Lucid Dreams. If you could think of one thing that maybe nobody knows about you, that you don't mind sharing. Oh, bet. Um, I, I hate the song, Lucid Dreams. <laughs> you hate the song? <laughs> yeah. You hate the song? I hate the song, Lucid Dreams. What happened? Why? It's just, it's annoying now. Annoying now. Yeah. The whole song is annoying. Yeah. Pretty much. So you know, I my sorry, not sorry. The, the he also said he hated performing it with the passion, but still played it out of duty to his fans. Juice World has said multiple times in his song lyrics that he wanted to die. Bye, drink the whole pint tonight, ho being I die tonight, ho being I'm set free. Bibby spoke on this during the Into the Abyss documentary. I do. I listen to all the music, man. And th that's he said it in over, over 20 some songs, over 30 songs, he said he wanna die. And he freestyle, he don't write, he don't even take five seconds off to think about what he finna say. He just go straight. So I think that's how he felt. During Juice World's Into the Abyss documentary, it shows a clip of him throwing up at his last concert. <laughs> When you look up Juice World's last words on Google, what comes up is him saying to his fans, I love y'all more than life itself, during his final concert. I love y'all more than life itself, man. I said I love y'all more than life itself. The very last thing he did to close the concert was give a motivational message telling his fans they could do anything. One more thing before I leave. Y'all remember what I said about doing whatever the fuck y'all wanted to do in this life, right? Yes, sir. So now everybody say, believe! 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 Now everybody say, achieve! 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 Now go do great things. <laughs> One other eerie thing that happened during this final concert is him pointing to himself when singing about all legends falling in the making.
During an Instagram Live, Ali detailed Juice World's final moments alive and stated that his final words were actually, I don't feel good, and then her name, Ali. The last things that he did was turn around and dap up G-Money. I think Frozen was on the TV while we were in the lounge, like the lounge. He turned around and dapped up G-Money. He was right across the seat from me here. I was right here. Then he looked at me because he didn't feel good, and he was like, Allie, I don't feel good. And then he went, Allie, and then froze the fuck up and seized the fuck out. And I ran over screaming and trying to help him. And no one fucking helped. Juice World and Beatles artist John Lennon had a variety of similarities that occurred throughout their lives. To start, they both had little contact with their fathers. At the age of three, Juice's father divorced his mother, and at the same age, John's father left his life. They both wrote similar lyrics of a life filled with pain. They both in a way predicted their own deaths. Lennon predicted his death when he sang Shoot Me in the song Come Together. Juice predicted his death various times that I covered, like in his song Wishing Well. But if I keep taking these pills, I won't be here. Juice even died on the same day John Lennon did, and this is what ties the whole conspiracy together and led some to believe that Juice intentionally died on this day. Juice had also referenced Lennon multiple times in his own songs, even comparing himself to him. I'm a jealous boy, really feel like John Lennon. I'm a drug abusing, coding, using modern day John Lennon. What is Love is the name of Juice's first ever mixtape, which was mostly scrapped and released in February of 2015. It apparently contained five songs before deleted by Juice in 2015, and the song Forever is all that remained. According to Genius, the other four songs on the mixtape were found recently, and the songs are titled Mmm Freestyle, Just Letting You Know, Lost My Mind Freestyle, and Make It There. Juice didn't have a real fan base at the time of the mixtape's release and deletion, so no one has photo evidence to prove the other tracks from the project. Kills World is the name of Juice's least known about collab project with the artist Kill Zero that released in June of 2018. It is a lost and obscure collaboration project that has three known songs, Whimpers in the Darkness, Don't Care, and Pop Punk Star. The songs in the project are of the pop punk genre mixed with the deep emotions of heartbreak and depression. The Art Gallery Music Project is the least known about project by Juice World. The only time it's ever been referenced is in April of 2016 when Juice posted a series of tweets all with the same caption reading, The Art Gallery Music Project coming soon. There were a total of four different paintings that were shown in these tweets. Nothing about the contents of the project is known to the public. There's a clip that Ali recorded where Juice turned around and flashed his ass to the camera. There's also a picture of Juice doing the same thing on another occasion. Ali even said that Juice did it a lot. Ali Pussy Fart Interlude is the name of an alleged Juice World Grail song that Juice recorded over a sampled beat of Ali thing. Realistically, it's a joke that spawned when somebody posted a fake track list for The Party Never Ends and it was the interlude. Now the meme has been flooded with fans claiming it to be real. This is the story that the meme has been given, as described by Reddit user IceDemon31983647. Ali Pussy Fart Interlude is the biggest grail of the Juice World community. Community. They accidentally played it on live for about two seconds once and instantly stopped it before it could play any longer. They then played another snippet that was more likely to get attention to distract from their mistake. It worked. No one realized what the two second snippet was until it was too late to go capture a recording of it. Then the label did everything they could, including using fake and or bot accounts to flood the community with memes about a rumored alley fart interlude. This also worked for the most part. As of now, assuming the file isn't lost, the Ali Pussy Fart interlude is still sitting insanely secure and locked down in a vault. It awaits an official release, and Bibi almost certainly has a very intricate plan for it. Some claim to have a copy of it, but they are just clout chasers. No one has the Ali Pussy Fart interlude. That's going to be all for this video. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you found this video informative or entertaining. There will be more videos to come, so if you enjoyed, please consider subscribing and comment what video you want to see next. I'd like to end this video with a moment of silence for Juice. Rest in peace, legend.